Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you very much for being here. It's uh, personally a real pleasure to be in this scenario. For You can see that we brought the sunshine from Chile, so <laughs> that's uh, even better. Uh, my name is Claudio Silvetti. I'm managing director of Wines of Chile. I just wanted to give you just a, a few words to let you know what we are doing. But uh, basically, as a Wines of Chile, we have a, a very ambitious plan for the year 2020. And uh, we want to move from $1,500 million to $3,000 million. So that's a, a major challenge that we are doing. And this is basically based on our diversity and quality and sustainability strategy. Those three points are really the, the, the pillars of this strategy. Uh, so the idea on this tasting is really to show you that Chile is in a revolutionary situation now. Uh, even for me, every day I'm discovering new wines, new appellations, uh, and new styles. So I think that uh, in this market, which is the most important market for Chile, it's extremely important to express you uh, what is happening there. Uh, just to mention, we are also doing a new appellation system. Uh, we have 14 valleys from north to the south, but we are now cutting these valleys from left to the right, from the Andes, in between mountains, and finally the coastal area. So um, the idea is to present you some ideas here, some, some styles, new things, and of course, you are uh, invited to, to, to see more detailed wines in, in the main tasting. So just to want to thank uh, Peter to help us with this. He's, he's been with us also in Brazil, in Chile, and many places. So he really knows even much more than me. And uh, it will be very interesting to hear what he says. Thank you. Thanks, Claudio. Thank you. I'd like to start by saying thank you. Thanks to all of you for coming. Uh, thank you also to Wines of Chile for having me uh, again. Um, thank you to Anita for putting up with my strange and bizarre request for double decanting and things like that, and, and, and the other ones, Anita. Um, so thank you very much. Also, I'd like to publicly congratulate Michael. Michael's not here at the moment, but uh, on becoming Master Vintner. I think we are having swan empanada for lunch. Um, and if anyone wants to tweet today, those of a Twitter inclination, then the hashtag for this event is hashtag chili terroir, which is on your tasting sheet. Michael's original plan for this tasting was to have uh, Dr. Pedro Parra come and talk to you about uh, terroir. There is no one more qualified than Pedro uh, to talk to you. He's wonderful. But the life of a glamorous consultant um, and winemaker means he's somewhere between Armenia and New York City. Uh, so here I am. Uh, so you have to make do with me, I'm afraid. I'm not going to dwell uh, on any introduction to me. Most of you know me far too well already. And frankly, you're probably fed up with hearing me bang on about Chile as well. So suffice it to say, I taste a lot of Chilean wine. I travel there very regularly. I get to write a lot about it, and uh, that makes me a very happy person indeed. But what we've done today is we've gone hybrid. So uh, think of this as like a, a bog-off terroir seminar. You're getting two brains for the price of one. Um, the idea, as Claudio said, is we've got some wines here which are really... I think there's only one wine which you'll find in the main room. So the idea was to give you something a little bit different today uh, here so you could then go on. Think of this as like the warm-up to the Olympian main event you've got coming afterwards. But it's nothing too strenuous. So think of this like Usain Bolt's chicken nuggets before the main race. That's how I'd like you to see this particular thing. And the idea is really that these wines get us talking. Um, challenge some preconception about where Chile is and where it's going uh, with some really new wave wines. And the only thing I ask of you is you taste, and I would expect nothing less looking around this room, you taste with an open mind and an inquisitive spirit. You have to kind of reassess, this is a process I've been doing recently, is reassess, be prepared to change your critical parameters about what fine wine is and what Chilean terroir is as well. Before we start the tasting, though, I think it's important to sort of set the scene uh, and establish the parameters. So what is terroir? I'm not going to spend too long on this. This is something which is debated. You guys all know. Um, but I do like these definitions. Um, I think the first one comes with a heavily Australian accent. Um, the second one was an MW seminar. Um, but I love, I love Emmanuel Franquet's definition there because it does away completely with all the sort of 
pretentious, esoteric, lyrical aspect of Terroir, which I am just about to embark on. Um, and I, I do like Ed Flaherty's uh, definition as well. But for what it's worth, my uh, Master of Wine definition that I have for the exam, was the, which is a bit bald now that I read it, was the unique terroir is the unique convergence of the environment, the vine, and human intervention, and its subsequent effect on the vine and the wine. Now, going a step further than that, I like to anthropomorphize things, really. I think it makes it easier to picture, easier to understand. For me... Terroir is a wine's personality. It's a combination of nature and nurture that gives a wine a unique character, which you then interact with, interpret, and appreciate. Okay? Crucially, and um, this is personal, I make no apologies for that, but I think it's helpful for you to understand my understanding of terroir, hence how I've gone about choosing these wines. I have no truck with people who claim or try to dismiss the human element of terroir. Terroir is a human construct. Okay, man intervenes at all stages of the process, from rootstock, site selection, canopy management, training, uh, pressing, fermentation. For me, if I'm exp going to express it in an image, nature is the rock from which man carves a sculpture. That's how I see it. I also think there's another element, human element to terroir, which often isn't discussed, which is that of the drinker. For me, terroir doesn't exist unless there is someone there to act as an audience, to interpret it, to appreciate it, in whichever manner that is. But that's still an important element to remember. And that's important for Chile, because for me, Chile is getting there in terms of making great terroir wine. There is no question in my mind and in Pedro's mind that Chile has world-class wine terroirs. And we are starting to see the wines that express that. But for me, it's the human element that's been lacking in the past. And by that, I mean several things. I mean the winemakers who have the experience, the intuition, and the knowledge to really bring out the great terroirs. It's the CEOs, the guys, the accountants, the guys who hold the purse strings to invest, to give winemakers the freedom to really express terroir. It's the presence of the boutique wineries who can take a risk, do crazy things, explore new boundaries. And finally, as I said earlier, that's the knowledge of the drinkers, of us, the people who are drinking these things and appreciating them and understanding them. These are all recent things. I think with Chile, there is always a time issue. Uh, over half of the vineyard is under 15 years old in Chile. Over half. That's quite something when you think about the nature of the wines coming out today. In 1989, Chile made 400 million litres of wine and now it makes over a billion. I think sometimes we get a bit ahead of ourselves, especially in the press. We want new things. We expect great things year to year. You've got to remember with Chile, this is recent history. So I think we're only just starting to scrape the surface. But to recap very briefly uh, on Chile, because I think it's worth doing very briefly, um, Chile has some very old and very complex geology. Um, the... You won't be able to see it particularly well, but on the left of the screen is the geological map of Chile. And I would recommend, uh, if you're interested in these sort of things, as I am, I don't get out much, uh, you can find this online pretty easily just by Googling Chile geological map. It is pretty fascinating, and when you enlarge it, it actually really helps your understanding of, of these different wines. Um, the origins of Chile, though, were in the Paleozoic era, era about 300, 400 million years ago. The first bit of Chile to emerge from the sea were the coastal hills in the west and the hills in the north, what's now the Atacama Desert. That's important for wine because those are the parts which are most evolved. A lot of Chile is um, igneous rock. There's a lot of volcanic activity here. Um, Chile was formed by the Nazca and Antarctic plates being subducted, going underneath the South American plate. So there's a lot of volcanic activity here. A lot of the rocks are igneous. So you get granites typically in the coastal hills, but they're very evolved. They're much more evolved than the Andean side. The Andes emerged much later, a couple of hundred million years later, and that was when Chile came into being. Um,